One of the decisions you have to make when you're purchasing a standing seam metal roof is how wide is your panel gonna be? But why does that matter? What can it affect when it comes to aesthetics, engineering, price, and more? That's what we're gonna talk about today. And to help me out, I've got Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department. Jeff, thanks for being here. Yeah, absolutely. So let's jump into it. You know, when it comes to panel width considerations, you know, what do you have to think about as a contractor or a homeowner when you're purchasing your standing seam metal roof? There's a ton of things to think about. Panels can get made in a variety of different sizes. I mean, you could have a panel that's, you know, as narrow as 12 inches wide. You could have a panel as wide as 24 inches wide. It doesn't mean it's always going to be appropriate to the project that you're doing, though. Panel width is going to affect things, you know, as far as, you know, tested systems go. It's going to affect the aesthetics, obviously, of your project. You know, good or bad aesthetics, the, the overall look of what your project is going to look like. And, you know, it definitely can affect cost. So if I don't know where to start, are there standard panel widths that are typically installed? Yeah, without a doubt. Fixed in place manufacturers are going to have certain panel widths that they offer. Um, most standing seam panels you see offered, whether it is from a fixed in place manufacturer or a regional manufacturer that's running their own panels, you're usually not going to see panels most of the time over 18 inches wide. And that's really going to be dependent on the type of standing seam panel that you're using. The residential applications, usually 16 inches is going to be the max that you're going to see. That is your, your standard width for most residential panels. Some commercial applications, you could see them up to 18 inches wide on, for lack of better words, the beefier profiles, the two inch mechanical, the inch and three quarter. Those panels the seam configuration is different and they're a little stronger when it comes to uplifts uh, so they can get away with a little wider panel a lot of it also has to do if you're working with a, a say a regional manufacturer or a portable roll former panel widths are usually going to be dictated by the size of the coils that are standard that are that's offered you know say if we're talking about an inch and a half mechanical system that panel uses four inches of material to make the seams of the panel itself so that usually comes out of a standard 20 inch wide coil so that 20 inches wide take away four inches of seam it leaves you with a 16 inch panel you get into some of the commercial panels like the inch and three quarter or the two inch panel which you see a lot in the commercial world those are usually made out of a 24 inch wide coil those panels use six inches of material to make the seam, so that leaves you with an 18 inch wide panel. A lot of it is based on, you know, standard offering of coil widths of what, you know, a, a coil supplier would provide or the different two, three, four different options that a fixed in place manufacturer might offer. Okay, so if I'm a contractor, I can just talk to my coil supplier and say, you know, hey, what are some standard coil widths? You know, what do you recommend? And they should be able to give some kind of uh, direction when it comes to coil size. And then that will kind of infer panel size from there. Yeah, absolutely. Especially especially if uh, the coil supplier you're using is, is offering engineering on those panels. You know, they're going to have a specific, you know, they're going to have something tested and they're going to have a coil that usually matches that testing. Let's talk Sheffield specific here for a second. Uh, our standard coil list that we offer most are 20 inch wide coils and 24 inch wide coils. So a lot of our testing is based off those standard coil lists. Pretty much everything up to an inch and a half mechanical is gonna be run out of a 20 inch wide coil. Inch and a half, 550, inch and three quarter and two inch panels are gonna be run out of a 24 inch wide coil. So that gives us our standard panel width offerings based on the coil sizes that we use. You can deviate from that. Uh, you know, you can say, if we test a 16 inch wide panel, we can keep that engineering valid going to a narrower panel, but we can't go to a wider panel and still keep the engineering valid because when you're talking about testing, the, the narrower panels perform better. They're stronger because they don't have as much deflection due to the, the wide base of the panel. If you have a system that's tested in 16 inches, it covers you all the way down to basically a 12 inch wide panel. Same with 18, you can go down to a 12 inch wide panel. It doesn't affect your testing. Um, you can't go wider than that and still keep that engineering valid though. So if a contractor were to decide that they wanted to go with a narrower panel, they would just order that whatever coil size would match that from Sheffield Metals or their coil supplier and then create that panel from that. Yeah, say they're using a panel that takes uh, four inches of material to make the seams, they want a 12 inch wide panel, they would end up ordering a 16 inch wide coil. We can you know, adjust and get you the coil size needed. 
say you're doing an engine out mechanical that takes four inches of material on the seams, you want a 12 inch wide roof panel, we can slit that coil down to a 16 inch wide coil. So it gets you the 12 inch wide panel. Um, usually you really see that happening when you have to match an existing building or something along those lines. Uh, and you're trying to get the aesthetics to, you know, for an overall look of a complete project. Maybe you do one building now, you add another building, however long later, uh, you want them both to match. Just because you're going with a narrow width panel, um, a narrow width coil in that situation, you're still buying the full size coil. They're just slitting it down for you. So you're not going to get a cost savings there by going to a narrower coil. So something we do see pretty often is homeowners trying to get as wide of a panel as possible to try to reduce cost. You know, why why would someone do that and what would you say to that? Pros and cons, right? You know, the wider panel you use, the less clips and fasteners it takes to uh, install that panel so that your accessories are less. Uh, and the wider panel you use, the faster your roof is going to go on, right? You're covering more distance with less, with less panels. If you're doing... Uh, 20 inch wide, 24 inch wide panel, it's gonna go down a lot faster than uh, a 16 inch panel would and you're gonna use less clips to install it. Therefore, it's gonna be cheaper. Using a panel that is very narrow definitely slows things down and you know creates more time and more cost. And it's not just that one thing that should factor into, this, into your decision. Like we said, it's gonna affect the performance of the roof and it's going to affect the aesthetics of your roof. You know, you might have a, a one story ranch with a 24 inch wide panel might look a little strange. It might not perform as well if you're in snow country, you have high winds, you know, you might be in trouble there. Yeah, absolutely. The wider your panel gets, the more oil canning can be susceptible. You know, so, I mean, that is a concern when you talk about using panels that are really wide. You know, same thing when you go with a panel that's real narrow, you know, you have a seam every 12 inches on center, your roof might look super busy. Obviously, I look at a lot of metal roofing. So when I see a panel up there that's 20 inches wide or 20 or, or bigger, it just looks off to me as far as, you know, the aesthetics. I'm like, man, those panels look really far apart. It looks it looks like almost somebody just sheeted it in metal versus, you know, a metal roof. If you're going to spend the money on a metal roof and you have a tested system that, you know, is offered to you, I, I always suggest going that route because uh, it's, it's just added insurance to your investment. You're not going to go buy a brand new car and say, you know what, don't give me the warranty on it. I don't need that. You know, it's it's just one of those things. It's if if you can have something that you know is tested and how it's gonna how it should perform if it's installed correctly, uh, I I think that's a no brainer to me. One of the things you mentioned before is oil canning. Can we dive into that a little bit more and talk about how having a larger field or flat part of your panel can affect aesthetics like that or even performance when it comes to hail, um, and then that will affect your aesthetics long term as well. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, start off with hail. Obviously, the wider your panel is, the less rigid it's going to be. Um, there's going to be more area to ob obviously receive hail damage and be able to see it a lot better. It might not affect things structurally or it might not affect the watertight integrity of the roof, but it definitely can affect the aesthetics. You know, so when you have those broad, wide areas, any, any imperfection is going to show up a lot more than it would say in a narrower, more rigid panel. Cause that's what it comes down to is, you know, the rigidity and the strength, the wider your panel, the more hail damage is going to show. And quite honestly, the more hail damage you might receive because, you know, it's the panel's just not as rigid as say a narrower panel would be when it comes to oil canning. Again, that, that rigidity of the panel and that wider area is going to show up imperfections a lot more, um, whether it be stresses in the panel, whether it be imperfections in the roof deck, or just in the roll forming of the panel itself. You're going to see stress points more. You're going to see any imperfections more. And then they also have a wider area for it to spread out on the panel as well. You know, you take a 12 inch panel, you put it on a screw head, you might see a little, a little indentation. You put that same 20 inch wide panel on the same screw head it has a lot broader area to spread out and show um the inconsistencies or the imperfections that you might be dealing with one quick side note about this is striations which is something we recommend to help uh you know reduce the appearance of oil canning can you talk about that when it comes to panel width does it make a difference yeah, well, I recommend striations with everything I personally like the look of it uh it might not be everybody's uh, cup of tea. Um, the thing about striations is that 
you have to have them put in when the panels are being made. There's no real way to put them in after the fact. So say you run your panels out, you put a couple up there and you're like, wow, my roof's really oil cannon. There's not a whole lot of options as far as putting striations in after the fact. The striations, you know, they reduce the appearance of the oil cannon, you know, it reduces the contrast of how you visually see any imperfections in the deck. When you have a flat wide surface, anything that's not flat is going to show up. With the striations, it has that wave pattern that it puts into the flat of the panel. So if there is a stress point or there is something a little off, it's a lot harder to notice because visually it doesn't stand out as much as it would on a flat panel. Really recommend it on the wider panels. If you're doing, say, a 12-inch panel or a 14-inch panel, you might have a lot more success with not seeing oil caning without striations than you would, say, a 16 or 18-inch wide panel. You know, always recommend them, especially if it's a uh, re-roof or something like that where buildings settle, things not might not be as square or as plumb as they used to. You might have deck imperfections. Yep, that's great advice. Well, thanks, Jeff. Always appreciate the information that you share. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'd love to answer them. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. As always, I'm Thad Barnett. We'll catch you next time.